Still looking at uh, the potpourri of issues on State of the Nation this morning here on Sunrise Daily. Joining us to look at that as a former member of the House of Representatives and Executive Secretary Anti-Corruption Network, Dino Malai. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, viewers. Well, uh, your state is already in the news. Uh, initially, we thought uh, Boko Haram and some other... Now they've chosen to use the name Gunman, perhaps uh, trying to unravel what uh, is responsible for the crisis in... Kogi state. Let's start with the insecurity in the in the nation, in some parts of the country, your state inclusive. Yeah, um, I will start by saying that um, it's very unfortunate that Nigeria at this moment was suffering from perilous times, times of opprobrium, times of obloquy, and um, it's just a demonstration that we are not only sick, but equally suffers from what I call a dreadful continental abnormality. Um, my beloved state is unfortunate that uh, there's been very serious violence and um, attacks. But um, the difference between um, ineptitude in leadership, the difference between maladministration and insecurity in Nigeria is the difference between six and half a dozen. I want to say what you're seeing in Kogi State is not different from what is manifesting in Borno. It's not different from what is happening in... Um, UB and other part of the northern, uh, other northern uh, part of the, uh, I mean the north of the uh, of the country. Basically, what you see is the negative concomitant effects of corruption. Give Nigerians good governance, this insurgency will stop. Give Nigerians um, uh, democracy in its right form, which is government of the people by the people and for the people. What we suffer now is government of the greedy, by the greedy and for the greedy. And I want to tell you that is a direct um, um, the, the insurgency, the insecurity in the country is a direct resultant effect of um, poverty, of hunger, of corruption. Because the people are supposed to form a police and an army to give information, to help expose um, militants gunmen, Boko Haramists, living within their milieus. But the people have become so disenchanted, so disillusioned, so unperturbed that they don't even care about what is <coughs> happening. Well, that's what uh, uh, Elijah Yerma, the last guest, uh, said. You should, we shouldn't leave it with uh, the security operators yeah, alone. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I'm so telling as you a that people, that now, for, shouldn't we stop being pert perturbed and rather think of ways to actually take this out of our communities because in the first place remember when it started then in Borno everyone thought it was uh, a Borno state affair then later on we saw it in other parts of the uh, northern states and now Kogi. Yes yeah, Suleiman the truth of the matter is that it's very painful that my beloved state is suffering this same um, menace but the truth of the matter is very simple that what we have in Boko Haram today is not different from what we had in Metasini in 1980 and in 1981, the difference between Metasini in 1981, 1980, 1981, that manifested in Kano, in Yola, and what we are experiencing now is the issue of capacity. That then we had Metasini, the effect of Metasini in 1980, 1981 is even more ravaging than it is right now. The magnitude and intensity of their satanic manifestation is far, far higher than what is being manifested now. But what the difference we have between that is the issue of containment. This particular insurgency insecurity we have in the country, there is no capacity for containment. There is no capacity to challenge it. You cannot give what you don't have. You think we don't have it? No, we don't have it. The problem is right from the presidency to the security heads and uh, implementation of the security operatives in this country is, 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 is down. You know, you know why uh, some Nigerians would disagree with you? Even I said yesterday we were looking at the map and trying to look at some of the issues in some of these states. And just yesterday, some of those who were uh, uh, responsible for the act in Kogi State were caught in a town called Ibilo in Edo State. If they were asleep, then I don't think we'll be having my brother, such a... My brother, we are used to these rhetorics from security agencies. At the time, but you could see what they're time, doing. At the time, at the time, they told us Kabiru Sokoto, the bomber of the Madala um, Christmas bombing in Abuja, have been arrested. After a while, they said he escaped. They said, if, in fact, 
a commissioner of police was interrogated and dismissed. That is a, a commissioner of police bill. They said after uh, Kabiru Sokoto disappeared, later they said he was caught somewhere in Bauchi or somewhere, and that he is the masterminder of the uh, Madela bombing. Two months ago, the same security network in this country also reported that they caught another character who is the actual bomber of uh, Madala Christmas uh, bombing. A day after, the man, they said, died in custody. So if you look at these disjointed stories, we have been lied to, relied to, and it's actually a government of lies, government of ifs. Well, Nigerians you, are you know, not happy because the issue of insecurity in this country can be tamed. The, the difference, what we expect the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to do is to take the issue of the security headlong. It is not a bread and butter, butter situation. What do you expect? What we expect what do you the expect? presidency to do is that the fundamental problem, the problem is foundational. When Boko Haram started, they started in with very light, in very light mag magnitude. But there was no immediate containment of the activities, you know, I, in, the I, I, in the way I, I, and manner. Just I'm, I'm, not, I'm not praising I, Obasanjo here. I'm mm -hmm. not praising Obasanjo here. I'm not even here to talk about it. But the truth of the matter is that when Sharia crisis started in year 2000, the force with which it was confronted, there was a retreat. But again, the same thing happened I think, in I think, OD, I think you are the same thing just, just allow me come here. The same thing happened in Joss. But again, uh, Mr. Malai, you remember then people also criticized the former president. You say that is another issue with Nigerians. So people would definitely no, criticize not, not it. I, I'm coming now in the era of security when you talk about Kabiru Sokoto back and forth, but there is a face to it, and these people were shown to the people, and those who finally died okay, in the, and those then. who finally even the SSS has been complaining you remember then they went to they went to court and they were talking about the way and manners with which they were released uh, they're not the ones no, releasing no, them and they, that, that, no no I'm not I'm not talking about Kabir Sukuda and they were also talking about the laws uh, which is uh, if, somehow if, inadequate if, if by the time about, they, by the time they take them to court they are working against the law so I was thinking because that the law say you must charge somebody so, within 48 hours if you are arresting him for a particular even though you're no longer in the National Assembly, I was thinking that by now the National Assembly should have actually swung into action to see if we can actually get laws and amend those laws so that those caught under the act the of problem, this the problem terrorism. Is not the problem of law. You said that part the problem. Of the problem is not the problem of law. It's not a problem of amending our secu our 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 our, our, our uh, police act or whatever. No, the problem is the problem of capacity. We have a president. Who do not have capacity to tame this insurgency as we have it. The truth of the matter is this: the, the the approach to insecurity problem in this country is like this particular government is trying to give um, treatment. They are trying to treat a patient like it's like treating a patient of chemotherapy even before you discover cancer. But again, if you, you expect, let's look at sorry, let's look at the Pakistan experience and in some other parts how it, it actually spilled into India, and even uh, look at uh, what we've seen in other parts of the world when terrorists actually took their cells into such countries. For instance, it wasn't an overnight success. It started the way it started in Nigeria. Uh, gradually, they were moving in, closing in on those people to the extent finally they finally got them. Even the but United was, States, was, that, even the United States, there was progressive progression. That is it. And that is there what was, that is what uh, seems to be it's in it's the country. Security plan. What we are waiting to see. But again, is you've heard that no one comes up with any security plan the, 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 to, the, to the public. Brother, Even the US my, can't my, tell my, you my their brother, security plan. I am I am against Boko Haram. I wake up every morning. I pray to the Almighty God that they must be arrested. The situation must come to normal. But the truth of the matter is this: manners don't fall from heaven any longer. The New Testament says, "He that." He that refused to walk, understand, should not eat.